Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back. So today we're going to get into small space gardening. I told you all I wanted to do a video, or maybe even a compilation of several videos of just different ways that you can garden in a small space, but you can get like a lot of food and uh, produce growth in that small space. So I ran to Walmart and they had these on clearance on closeout. So check your Walmart. Uh, mine was at a ridiculous price. I think it was $30, y'all. And I went ahead and picked up one. So we already know I already have one. And I actually used the last one for uh, microgreens and lettuce and all that. But for this one, I want to grow squash in because I'm having a hard time growing it in ground and keeping bugs away. So as you see here, I started off with some hay. I doubled it up with a couple bags of that dirt, that really good soil, I should say. And now I'm just adding a little bit of compost in here. This is just some scraps from me juicing this morning and straight into here. Um, I've been doing that a lot lately, just adding it straight in instead of just putting it in my compost bin. And it breaks down in about a week or two with no problem. Now, I did start some seeds, and I did it with you all a couple weeks ago. I did the uh, squash. Now, the squash that I'm using right here is the one from the 20 cent seed pack that we got from Walmart. And then I also have a container of the um, the regular one, the regular squash. I think it's summer squash is what they call it. And so what I decided to do was grow two in this container. Now this container is pretty big. I would say I could probably grow quite a bit in here, but the fact that squash uh, grows really big and zucchini grows kind of large with their foliage or whatever, I wanted enough space. So I'm putting it in on one on one side and one on the other. And that's about 12 inches of a growing space like a whole foot of space so in doing that it'll allow me to have room for my roots to expand and grow now as this grows a little bit i am going to top it off with more dirt i try to wait to top it all the way out, off and not fill it up immediately when we first get these because i made that mistake last time of filling it up and the actual structure bowed on me a little bit and i want to keep this one in its you know structured form so i decided to just um use those two bags of that soil and that hay and the hay will allow the roots to move around as well and it's just some added material so i don't have to buy so much soil you know so anyway i did have some red onions i picked up from walmart and i needed to kind of clean them off they were pretty thick and muddy and dirt at the bottom and i was trying to separate to find the best roots so i can go ahead and plant them now in this middle space it's a, I don't know how much the space is. I probably should measure it. I'll try to see if I can find this thing and link it down below. I'm not even sure if I can find it because I know it's on clearance or whatever, but it is a raised bed. It's from Walmart and um, I've seen these several times outdoors at Walmart, but in here in this middle space, it's enough to plant like a tomato plant, a pepper plant, and maybe some flowers. Like it's a really big space. Um... I would say maybe 20 inches wide and maybe um, a little bit more than a foot going back, 20 and 40. It's pretty wide in that space. It's more in the middle than on the ends. But I decided just to put the red onions here. I figured I would just spread them out if they're a hand width apart and just see if I can grow red onions. I've never grown them before. I've only grown green onions and i'm just trying something new i told y'all this year is the year of all things new and just me trying and experimenting and just learning from my mistakes if i even make a mistake who knows i might just be successful and just grow grow in abundance this year and that's what i'm hoping for so as you see here i just cleaned them off a little bit more they were quite thick and muddy found the larger ones and just went ahead and planted them in into this raised bed so i like these raised beds i like the height of them i like the material of them the one i had from last year i want to say i had that more than a year y'all that thing has done me really well so um i did went ahead and added some um worm casting in here because i forgot to do that when i first put the dirt in so i'm just gonna go ahead and mix that in and kind of move the dirt around to get it there and then once i do that we'll go ahead and um 
add some seeds from some uh, marigolds. So I want to do the permaculture where you have several items growing in a small space so that we don't attract a ton of bugs for one thing. So I know squash will sometimes attract squash bugs. And I figure if I add some marigolds, maybe we can counteract that and keep some of those bugs away. And the fact that it's not on the ground, not low to the ground, it's raised up high. Hopefully, I am successful in growing this year. I was successful about two, three years ago. And last year, I think I grew a couple of zucchinis. And next day I know it was bugs everywhere, honey. So I'm going to try to do better with this and cover it when I need to cover it. I might even throw some hoops on here like I hoop the other containers and just kind of see if I can net it for a little while until it really starts to grow. Just to give it a fighting chance. Not only will the marigold aid with keeping like those aphids and whatever away, but they will also add some color here and bring in some more added um, like pollinators for sure because those flowers in order to produce the zucchini and the squash will need to be pollinated. In this water bucket, I did add just a little bit of Alaskan fish fertilizer. Because the starter is already started, I feel like I can just, you know, give it a little boost. I don't want a lot of green leaves. I want a lot of food. So I don't want to over uh, fertilize it at this time. But normally at the first of the month, I fertilize everything in my garden. All right, so this didn't take long at all. This is one small space, zucchini, some squash, um, some red onions, some flowers, and yeah, let's go chat. All right, finally sitting down. So um, onions are in the bed as well as in that um, planter. I think I'm gonna go pick up another planter. I think I am, I'm not sure. Um, I still have all these onions left and it could drain the water, but I couldn't see which ones had the best roots in, without washing them off. And, um, yeah, I made sure I plant them together in their own space. So when I'm watering, if it's next to something that needs to be like thoroughly watered, it's not really that close. So hopefully they don't get saturated with water. Um, what else? I did plant some poppies and marigolds and all the red pots, um, so that they can grow. I can companion with like the, um, I don't know if it's gonna grow back, but the pink lemonade tree, the uh, kumquat, the um, plum cot. I planted some with the um, pear. I didn't plant any with this pear over here, but I got some new uh, plants in. They are so pretty. I forget the name of them, <laughs> but they do climb. And I just put them over here in those planters that um, Miss Angela and um, I think to share it far back. I put that over there. Um, so it can climb with the cucumbers and have these pretty colored pink flowers along with the yellow that the cucumber um, brings when it starts to do its thing. So I put that over there. I put Miss Belinda sign up for her garden. Um, so I don't think I need any more. Um, thought there was some start drag resin. I don't need any more uh, marigolds or anything I think around the pear tree that's actually in the ground over here because I think what I'm gonna do is have that's enough flowers over there where enough um, I think pollinators will come I'm trying to go with this permaculture environment right it's when you're not growing like you're growing different things in the same like bed so like where the tomatoes I have the tomatoes the um, basil nasturtiums and um, marigold. So nasturtiums, although we can eat them, they're also beneficial to um, letting off a certain um, scent that's, that will hopefully mask the scent like basil does of um, the tomatoes. So it wouldn't bring like the bad, you know, bugs. They'll bring the good bugs, right? The bees and everything that we really need. Um, and then basil, I just want to grow a ton of it anyway because I want to dry a lot. And I, want, I, I have a, a lot of plans for basil this summer. So I'm hope I'm um, successful in growing like a lot, a lot like y'all. I, I want to juice it like crazy. It was so good last year. Um, what else? Um, I put up a mustard green, showed y'all that. And I went ahead and um, I'm going to wash it off and chop it and just do something with it real quick and probably eat on it. Um, I'm going to, um, I went ahead and put the other onions 
into the bed. So I decided that um, for that bed that's been empty, I didn't know what I was going to put in it. I planted two green beans and then that have already sprouted and started to do their thing. They're like little starts that I did in those little red solo cups. And then I planted like in two other areas, just the beans themselves and see if they were, you know, it's like succession planting where these are already growing and I just put seeds down today. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know what's all in that bed, but it looks like it's beets and some other stuff, but I don't think it's gonna grow because it's about to be hot. Um, so I don't know what was in there. I need to top it off with some more dirt too. I thought we had some uh, compost, but my compost needs to be stirred. It's not um, heating up like it's supposed to be. So I need to add some brown to it. I'm gonna cut up some shreds, some paper, cardboard, or whatever, and get that in there. We did dump some leaves and some hay the other day. I put some worm casting in there too to get that going. But um, I guess I used so much the last time I filled up a bed. I mean, yeah, I can't make dirt that fast. But I decided to um, go ahead and just put those seeds down, those beans, and maybe we'll just have a green bean like bed with uh, with red onions. And then I planted marigolds in there and calendula. So that is, that'll give us a little bit of everything. Calendula is beneficial too for your garden, for pollinators, but it's also good for uh, drying for tea. So I wanna make sure we have not only the benefit like of warding away bugs, um, or um, making something taste even better like basil does for tomatoes. It brings out the flavors in tomatoes, but we can eat the basil, we can juice the basil, we can eat the nasturtiums. We can um, definitely dry and have a season for our um, basil. And then uh, when it comes to marigolds, it's, it's beautiful, but it also deters like aphids and stuff like that, right? Um, so I want to make sure that we're not just planting for pretty, we're planting for a purpose. So the only thing that's planted for pretty, pretty much is um, the popping flowers and um, I would say sunflowers, but we eat the seeds. But we just eat that too. It's, just, it's a really good snack. But I would say sunflowers, these trumpet-like flowers that is planted in those planet, the, the planters, they're planted for pretty but they're also gonna bring some beautiful pollinators. I think like dragonflies, I can't wait to see, okay? Um, but um, for the most part, everything's planted for a purpose. The only other thing I have planted pretty much for pretty, for aesthetics, is uh, zinnias. But I love to grow zinnias. They're so beautiful. And when they come, girl, it's like bees just flock to my backyard. Last year I had so many bees. I think I got bit twice last year. I mean, it wasn't bad, but um, stung. But I love to see bees in my backyard. I get so excited. Um, so that's the only thing I'm planting for pretty. And I have all these pots right here. We're gonna plant these up real quick. Throw some dirt in them. I already kind of put some mulch at the bottom. Cause some of these have holes and some of these don't. Um, I like this one. So I'd be careful how I water these. Um, yeah, I don't know why I got these pots. Oh, you know what? This one does have a hole. Oh, and it goes into this little thing. These came from like Target and they had these cute ones in their one spot. But I want to plant them up with some flowers and put them on my um, stand back here. And I'm just going to put some seeds in. I'm not going to buy flowers, I don't think. If I see some at a decent price, maybe. But I'm just going to put some zinnias in here. These grow just fine. They're 20 cent and they grow like really big. So I won't put too many seeds in these ball pots. But I just want to have like some cute colors and whatnot. Um, this one already has look like something coming through. I don't know if this is a, a plant or a weed. It's probably a flower, but I'll add one to it. But I have this one too um, to cut up, and that's about it. That's about it, y'all. That's all I'm going to do today. Um, I really just wanted to share the um, small space garden and how you can take a tower like that. And pretty much for a space like that, I would say that is, you could probably plant like six plants in there, I would think. I would think maybe two tomatoes, maybe a smaller kale, like design, like dinosaur kale, maybe like a, a pepper plant, a few um, um, onions, maybe, um, what else could be planting there? I don't know, but I think I'm gonna go grab one and then maybe on the next video, next coming video, I'll show you how you can plant multiple things in there. Now I did plant two of the squash, um, so maybe the other one would do like zucchini instead, but um, the squash, one's a 20 cent, one's a $2 pack, right? 
they can be really big they can grow huge so that's why i planted them like two feet in the middle that way maybe they'll grow over it and not like I don't know, maybe it'll grow over. And that's why I put the onions in the middle because I feel like they need root space. They just need space to grow. And around the edge line, of course, the marigolds for the color and pollinators. But I'm going to work on something that I learned um, yesterday. And I won't be able to put into action until the um, squash start growing. So I'm going to share it with you once it starts growing. But I'm going to try to keep it uh, like pruned back so we don't have so much green and more fruit right more more of the actual uh vegetable yesterday uh penny and i we went ahead and planted the pepper and the tomato in the grow bags so the grow bags that i received have several holes around the side but i want to try them first before we got ready adventures and bought a lot of plants and to see how it kind of works so what i did was i took the black and green one and the green and black one. I put the pepper plant in one, the tomato plant in the other. I got some really good dirt. Um, that dirt we had left over was um, some organic dirt and my compost. And I just put it in there and I kind of topped it with some um, hay because I don't know how often that thing is gonna dry out because it is a grow bag. And um, after we did that, we just hung them up on the fence. And girl, they're so freaking cute. They're so cute. I can't wait to see how this works because if this works, I'm encourage someone to definitely use that in a small space garden for hanging. Um, hanging plants normally do well. I know when it comes to tomatoes, they normally do well, the bushy type. I'm not sure about this variety of tomato that I put in here. Uh, I forget the name. Is it? Yeah, I don't think it was cherry tomatoes. Was it Lemon Boy? I hope not, because that one was vine everywhere. But we'll just see. Um, I can't remember the variety I bought. Um, I hope y'all would have put it on the screen. Do I have it? I don't think I have a cup anymore. But anyway, they're hung. They're ready to go. They've always been watered in. Because they are starts and they're good to go, they're a really good size start. I went ahead and watered it in with just a little bit of asking fish fertilizer. I don't want them to grow crazy. I just want to see how they grow and if they grow well. And if they do, I want to make sure that we um, we have them for, um, you know, to show you all. So you all know how it grows. But we can't. I can't really put strawberries in there right now because it's going to be hot. And this is in the area where that sun is just going to beat on them. That's why I chose two different types, like the pepper and the tomato. Because I know both of them grow in heat. All right, so that's about it, y'all. That's all we really did. We put the signs out, like I said, for Miss Belinda's um, sunflowers, Miss Sonia's tomato patch, and um, yeah, I can't wait to see this stuff. Everything's growing. Everything's growing. Like it's so many leaves on my peach tree. Miss Peaches is showing out, y'all. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just. I'm. Um. I don't know. I just feel like amazing. I love being out here. I love being out here. So, hope I'm encouraging someone to grow in a small space. You don't need a lot of space. You don't have to do all this. You don't have to put nothing in the ground. You don't have to be scared of black snakes and a bunch of worms. And I mean, we want worms, though. Okay, but you know, you know, I, I get it. The creepy crawlies in the ground. I get it. But if you can get like a raised bed of some sort, these grow towers. They're just look at they're just flourishing. They're beautiful. It's such a joy just to come out and see them. Um, small space gardening. You can do it. You can definitely do it. Just put your allocate little coins to the side. Make your budget. Find out what you want to grow. See how large that plant can grow. And then calculate your space. That's all. Just try to put something in every square foot that you have available. On your patio, mark off square feet, uh, squares or whatever for a square foot. Get you about eight grow bags. That's eight square feet, you know, four and four, you know, that's that ain't number two by four. You know what I'm saying? You can do it. I, I know y'all can. And I want y'all to tag me in all the pictures on Instagram. I want to see it all. Email me the picture. I want to see it all. I'm just so excited. But I just want us to encourage each other to grow. And um, something that just takes a few moments before you walk out the door for work to water your plants, come home and you can sit on your patio and see growth, something you grew, right? Um, and it don't have to be from seed. Go get you some starters if you can find something that's affordable. Don't pay no four or five dollars, but just get started doing something. Even if it's just two pots, just trying, okay? And I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. 
I just came from Aldi's. I'm about to put these groceries up. I'm finna go to the Costco. And um, I'll just share with you all what's in the fridge when we get back. And that'll probably be on tomorrow's video. So anyway, I'll see y'all on the next video. Have an amazing, amazing week. And look forward to all the videos that's coming soon. Because it's a lot of them.